I love talking about all these things that that you start to make the connection that you're making a good workout because these are all the same things that I think that keep you working out. Too. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I, I love the like good okay, ones, right? Yeah, all the things that the all the positive things that represent, you know, hey, you've had a good workout, are also all the positive things that are what keep you going for the rest of your life. If you can learn to look at these things, that's why it's so important. Like the other things that are bad ways to judge, like there's th those things don't bleed into your your lifelong like crushing yourself after a workout. Yeah. Does it make your life necessarily better later on? It's these things right here that we're trying to connect the dots with clients because if they can yes. make that make that connection, it's much more motivating for them to continue on long term. It can be really challenging to kind of determine whether or not your workout is successful, but what we're going to go over in this episode are some of the worst ways to judge your workout success. So if you do some of the following and you look at them and you say, oh, this means I had a good workout, you're totally wrong. In fact, it might be the opposite of what you think. You know, I wanted to talk about this because I always get messages from people who are like, uh, you know, hey, you know, this workout made me feel this way. I think it's real effective. Or why am I not getting sore anymore? Or yeah. how do I know if my workout is working? It sounds like the answer would be obvious, but as a trainer, this was something I had to constantly battle and overcome. Constantly. People well, judging the workouts the wrong way. Yeah, it's, it's a tough one because these are things that uh, our, our clients actually feel. And they, it's it's basically direct feedback uh, from the workouts, and this is something that they can associate with uh, something good. Whereas you know we have to kind of deconstruct that and then reeducate them on why, like you know, you might feel this, but it might not be. It's not the most beneficial way to approach this. It's going to be interesting to see how people receive this one because it, this is still a problem because we're still marketed to this way. Yeah, totally. I mean the. The sweat, the burn, the soreness, all those things that, you know, beast mode, no days off. We've been talking about this since we started this damn podcast, uh, and I still don't think we're winning the war on it. I think no. that it's still the what people still attach to what they think is a, is a good workout. Yeah, you know what it is? It's the, the, the challenging part of, of consistent fitness mm. isn't necessarily the pain um, that you get from the workout. I think that's what people think. It's like, oh, it's the pain of the workout. No. The challenging part is the consistency. That's the no pain, no gain. It's the sacrifice and the consistency. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily that I go to the gym and then beat the absolute crap out of myself and then, oh my God, this is going to be so successful because I feel so crappy. I mean, Justin brings up a good point though too. It's like we attach to the way we feel. Like we had, The other day we had a, a live caller and you know she was training like six, seven days a week. She was running, I mean, but phenomenal shape, right? She was uh, ex-gymnast, mm. 10 to 13% body fat. And we had a little bit of a conversation afterwards about, you know, how hard it is to get somebody like that to stop doing it, especially she's in good shape already, right? It, to stop doing that um, and focusing on those things when they know it makes them feel good. There's mm. nothing you can say as a coach or a trainer that is going to convince them otherwise because they get that cortisol dump. And that does feel good. Mm -hmm. So they get that dump from uh, that crazy intense workout. And you're over here as a coach, you're going like, that's not what you should be doing. That's not the right idea. That's not what's best for your body. And they're going like, it feels what's best for my body. Yeah, well, sometimes what they, th the reason why they think it feels good is because the workout is, is a distraction from something that feels worse. So for example, if you have really bad body image issues um, or you have a depressing job or a bad relationship. Well, it's an escape to go to the gym constantly and beat yourself up. And in that case, it does feel good. Look, you ask an alcoholic. That's a good point because now you're getting you now you're getting uh two, right? You're getting also the escape and you're getting the dump. Right. Because mm -hmm. you ask an alcoholic or a drug addict, like, hey, does it feel good to do the drugs? Well, I mean it obviously feels better than whatever it is that they that they are, you know, need to deal with. So there's that part of it. Then there's also the the car, you know, the the effect that you get from, uh, you know, not liking yourself or feeling like you're too fat or you're not attractive, and then you go to the gym and you kind of, you know, self-flagellate yourself, like you beat yourself up, right. and that feels satisfying, like ah, I'm such a lazy person and I have no discipline, it's punishment, but I punished myself and that feels good, it's cathartic mm -hmm. to to punish myself for all these bad judgments. Now you might not be thinking that logically, but that's kind of what happens. Subconsciously. And yeah. How many times have you had clients do that where they, they tell you about a class that they took and they were like, oh man, I, I was crawling out of the class. And it was 
so good. Oh, I, re- I like remember group martyr syndrome. Yes. I remember yeah. having clients that I'd be training, like, let's say three days a week and we'd be on this routine and, and uh, I would come in like, or I'd see them in like an off day and I'd come walking by and they'd be over like in the elliptical in the corner, <laughs> yeah, like yeah. pumping like crazy. I'm like, what are you, what are you doing here, Deb? Oh, I, you know, last night I went out with the girls yeah. and I had some drinks and this and that. And so, and not, not telling me like she was going to come in and, you know, burn it off because of what she did yesterday. And it was like this form of one punishment and then two, trying to burn off the calories that she could. And it is before. cathartic when you feel guilty. Right. I feel so guilty for the drinks I had last night. Mm-hmm. I will, uh, I will, it's like doing your, your hail, hail Marys or asking for forgiveness. Totally. I'm going to the gym and I'm going to sweat it out. And now it's okay. I've solved the problem that I created last night. So that cathartic feeling feels good temporarily. Now, when people say, uh, oh, no, but it feels good, the people that have gotten to convince, who who have actually convinced to change their approach, within a few months, they go back and say, I had no idea. I do feel, now I really feel good. I had no idea that I actually felt as bad as I did. I thought I was feeling great. So now the first one that comes to mind, this is an easy one. And this one took me, so long. It took me a long time to figure out for my clients. It took me way longer to figure out for myself. And I've said this before yeah. on the show, but trainers are always better with their clients than they are with themselves. For some reason, we, we consider ourselves like uh, we like the rules don't apply for some reason. But And that's soreness. Soreness is not a great indicator of an effective workout. But for the longest time, I thought it was. If I didn't get sore in a muscle or an area that I was training, I thought... It wasn't effective. Well, mm-hmm. obviously, it's not effective. I don't feel any soreness or pain there. Did I even really get the work? Yes. Uh, in, in, and this is like, especially for somebody just first coming into the experience, uh, because that's kind of a hard one to gauge initially. Yes. In yes, terms of like, point. like how much effort to put out and like what volume to attempt, and if, if you haven't really had any experience before, and so a lot of times like. Um, they may just assume that this is part of the experience and I just have to mentally get a little bit more disciplined in how I deal with this type of pain. But they're always kind of seeking that first initial um, same kind of experience where they they end up with this soreness and uh, this kind of overworked feeling. I actually think this one remains difficult uh, even after you've put it together because ideally I'm always trying to like take it like right to that, like right before that. And so even with all my years of experience, like that, that, that's a moving target. Uh, it, it's a moving target based off of, uh, your stress levels. It's a moving target based off of your, your previous consistency of your lifting nutrition. your nutrition. So it's this to me, um, it's a, it was a, I had a big aha moment. I too, like figured it out with my clients first later on, still struggle with myself. Okay. Now fully started to piece it together for myself. I understand it. I understand that I'm not trying to be sore, but then even trying to gauge my workouts and go like, oh, that's probably enough. That'll take me right to that edge. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm just, I'm, I'm sore right now, more sore than I need to be. And it, again, I was just like, and I, you know, it's crazy. I thought, man, I only did two sets of that, but I chose a weight that was much heavier than what I needed to do for that exercise because that specific exercise, I hadn't done that in a long time. And of course, I still make this mistake. I go like, oh, I've done 225 yeah, on my back. Yeah, you're comparing yourself. Yeah, to, yeah, I've done 225 on my back. So putting, you know, what did I have? Uh, 15, 100, 110 pounds or something on my back. And I'm like, I've done 200. That's less than 50%. Mm-hmm. And I'm only doing two sets. I should be fine. Sore as shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I, I, I do think that even when you figure this out, you still kind of continually make these these mistakes of so it's because it's a constantly moving target. Yeah, the interesting thing about soreness is if soreness tells you anything, it tells you that you did too much. Really, there's really not much else soreness will tell you. It doesn't tell you, you had a good workout, it doesn't tell you you're gonna build muscle or burn body fat, but it can tell you that you you did too much. What's what's interesting about this one is my approach with clients in this regard was a complete flip as I became more experienced. So what I mean by that is an early trainer, I would seek out getting my clients sore. Hey, how did your legs feel after a workout? Oh, they felt fine. And then I'm like, oh, I'm going to go harder. We got to get you sore. Like, oh my God, I can barely move. Good, effective workout, right? Five years later, like it took me this long to figure it out, maybe even more. If someone told me, oh man, I was so sore after that workout. Okay, we went too hard. What I was looking for as an experienced trainer, and when when I was experienced, I was much more effective, meaning clients got way better results, okay? What I was looking for was 
I kind of felt it or eh, I really didn't get sore. Perfect. That's the intent. That was the right intensity and the right volume for your body. And that's my goal. With my own body, I didn't think about this isn't something that I applied till much later because for myself, it was always beat myself up, beat myself up, beat myself up. But at one point when I figured out full body workouts and I figured out not going to failure and I figured out how to modify intensity, my strength gains exploded and I never got sore. This was the part that was like, aha for me, but it was also obvious. It was like, oh my God, I'd go to my workout. I'd finish my workout a day or two later, no soreness. And then I'd repeat the workout again and it felt good. And my strength went through the roof. Till this day, my goal is to feel little to no soreness. So a little bit of soreness is probably okay. The kind that you have to search for. Like if you worked out your chest, you kind of have to stretch it and maybe squeeze it and be like, oh, I think I worked it. That's fine. If you have the kind of soreness that lasts like a day or two or where you're sore to the touch or it affects your movement, you went way too hard. Yeah, because yeah, I mean, everybody, well, that has gone to the point where they feel that sore, where it's almost like they're uh, immobile, where it's it's really hard for them to even function. But then now try to uh, apply that same type of intensity to the next workout. I mean, you're, you're limiting your progress just in the next workout by having that kind of soreness coming into it. So, you know, to, to really kind of look at it from a longer term perspective about how you can keep, you know, adding on and, and chipping away at, at progress, it's got to be a lot less uh, and you got to be energized each time to be able to do like a better performance in your workout. I wish I, I wish there was a study on this because I, I have this theory, too, that it dramatically impacts your knee even. So, for example, like I'm going through it right now. I just told you I overreached. Oh, I'm yeah. so like subconsciously right now i have a tendency to just move less because so my, you burn less calories my ass yeah. is like so sore it's sore to the touch right now yeah you that, just want to sit down yeah i just want to sit down and every time i get up i go yeah. and every time mm -hmm. i say Ugh. so because of that i'm like less likely to pop up out of my chair and go move and do something like i would if i felt really good yeah and energized so you know and it has how much far-ranging effects doesn't it yeah so how much more does that most of us are in in pursuit of building muscle and or burning body fat having a lean fit physique right so it's not i don't want to just just get sore built and build muscle i also want to be lean and so that also affects my movement and calorie burn for the day too and be what i'd want it'd be interesting to see you know how much in the net the you know starting since yesterday today tomorrow does my knee diminish because I'm so It makes sore. perfect sense. Right. Look, I'm going to use an analogy, okay? So um, building muscle, burning body fat are adaptation processes in the body. So when you build muscle, you obviously, you, 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 there's a certain level of stress that you put on your body by lifting weights. And then your body, it tries to adapt to that by becoming stronger. So that next time the same insult uh, doesn't produce the same amount of stress. And so this is how you get stronger over time. So let's use another form of adaptation. I've, I've used this before. And that's your, your skin tanning in the sun. So if I go to the sun and I expose myself to the right amount of sunlight, my skin will slightly darken to adapt so that next time, the same amount of time spent in the sun with the same intensity, it wouldn't produce any stress. Okay. Soreness would be akin to a sunburn. Okay. So imagine if you're trying to tan effectively and what you keep seeking is sunburn. Are you going to tan <laughs> faster? No. Mm -hmm. You're going to tan. It's going to take you much longer to get a good tan if you keep going out and getting sunburn. You're just creating too much damage for your body. It's also a good analogy because the, the how much sun can cause a sunburn in you is determined by your genetics. It's also determined by your exposure, previous exposure to the sun. It's also can be determined by your diet and hydration and those types of things as well. So, so the reason why soreness is also a bit challenging is because it's impossible to avoid. And I do want to be clear. You're going to get sore when you change workouts. You're going to get sore when you're on a layoff or it's hard for you to judge the intensity. But once that happens, use that as a gauge and say, okay, that was too hard. What you don't want to do is use it as a gauge and say, that was perfect. Let's push harder and keep seeking out that soreness. That is a fast track to overtraining, terrible results, and and actually reverse results. You'll actually go opposite direction if you keep seeking out soreness. I, you know, I think that's such a good, it's such a good way to say that because I, I don't, I also don't want to get this misinterpreted as you know oh if you're getting sore you're you're doing a terrible job like because it, it's inevitable you're going to get sore from working out it, it like how sore you are though it's just the way you like you said it's perfect it's like i i know after i did that i go like oh wow i didn't need to do that much that's how you use versus that. Yeah, me yeah. going like oh yeah 
That yeah. was good. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Next workout, I'm going to get it again like that or ramp it up. I'm going like, oh, wow, I could have probably reduced that weight significantly and got as good of, if not, arguably better results. Yes. That's the way I look at it now versus going like what I used to do, which is like, oh, yeah, I got it. You know what I'm saying? That's totally. a good, that was a good workout. Oh, what's up, everybody? Big giveaway today. The RGB bundle. Here's what you get in that. This is what you can get for free if you win this contest. I'll tell you how in a second. But here's what comes with it. MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Aesthetic, MAPS Performance, Kettlebells for Aesthetics, the Sexy Athlete Mod, and the Butt Builder Blueprint. All of that in this RGB bundle you can get for free, but you got to do this. Leave a comment in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. Subscribe to this channel, turn on notifications, do all those things. Uh, and if we pick your comment, we'll notify you and you'll get free access to the RGB bundle. Now check this out. For everybody else, the RGB bundle is an additional 50% off right now. Okay, so if you want to sign up, and get nine months of exercise programming all set up for you, you can sign up for the RGB bundle and get 50% off. Now, if you just want to try one MAPS program, if you just want to try it out, see what it's all about, MAPS suspension is 50% off. This is a suspension trainer-based workout program. Minimal equipment, doesn't need much space, but you still build muscle, you still burn body fat. Okay, so RGB bundle 50% off, MAPS suspension 50% off. Here's how you can sign up. Go to mapsfitnessproducts.com and then use the code JULY50 for that 50% off discount. All right, here comes the show. All right, so the next one is sounds funny, but uh, I can't tell you how many clients use this as a, as a gauge of an effective workout. And that's how much you sweat in the workout. Hmm. I've had clients literally tell me with a strength training session uh, that's traditional where we're resting two or three minutes in between sets, we're doing low reps which happened to be, for these clients, the most effective workout at the time where we saw strength gains, we saw whatever. And they would say things to me like, you know, I barely sweat in these workouts. <laughs> yeah, is it really, yeah. like, is it really being that effective? <laughs> your, the sweat you produce it's in your workout, anaerobic. all yeah. it tells you is that you're overheating. So it can be, a good workout can make you sweat and a crappy workout can make you sweat. An effective workout can make you sweat and ineffective workout there's can make you sweat. There's also a massive, genetic factor yes, there's yeah. a massive yes. genetic variance in this too. Like I've had clients before that I crush them in the gym and like one drop of yeah. bead of sweat comes down their forehead and that's the it. littlest thing. And I've yeah. had clients where they're just dripping everywhere and like we're carrying towels and you know, it's just one of those, th it just varies so substantially. Well, it goes back to your point earlier. It's a feel thing. Yes. It feels like you're, I mean, I'm, if I'm sweating, I feel like I'm doing a lot. Yeah. yeah. I'm doing a lot right now. Yeah, I sure. remember. And you when, can't convince me otherwise. Do you guys remember <laughs> yeah. when we went to Sweat that equity. that Pilates studio? We were going to oh. do this video. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. There was this idea, our media team, this <laughs> a long time ago. This is a long time ago. Yeah. I hope we we deleted this it's, somewhere. It's, yeah, it's, it's gone. somewhere in the vault and never be released. But uh, <laughs> our media team was like, oh, my God, it'll be so funny. If you guys, because you're meathead looking guys, right? We took you to a Pilates class. It wasn't a Pilates. It was one of the, it was a bar class. Bar. Bar. Right, 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 right. Bar. So yeah. similar, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if we, if we take you to this bar class and we'll film it. So we go there and I mean, okay, bar and that kind of movement's got some value, right? It's going to create some stability and short ranges of motion. I can see how it's applicable for certain things. It's activity. So I'm not saying it's like a worthless workout, but in terms of like, <laughs> muscle building, strength, and fat loss, it's inferior to just a traditional slow-paced strength training workout. But all of us were in there sweating our asses off because we've never done a workout like that before, yeah. and it's not something we're used to. It's was that workout more effective because we sweat a lot? No, it was it a very burned, ineffective and it, and it burned a lot. Like yeah, a, and I, you know, and I, I do want, at one I do, point, we're drumming on the ground with, like, sticks. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I do want to correct you because I know our customer service team is going to get a ton of emails of you for you actually comparing bar to Pilates. Totally bar, different. Bar and Pilates are not allowed, That's right. allowed at all. And I actually think that there's a lot, there's tremendous value in Pilates. Uh, there's, so, there's value in either one. I can see uh, application. There's not very much value in bar. Well, I think so. Well, maybe that. Maybe <laughs> I'll, I'll go ahead and say that. Now the customer service is going to come for you. Oh, man. Adam's on the chopping <laughs> But, right. but yeah, no sweating is a uh, sweating is a terrible uh, way to to judge a workout. I mean, you could literally turn up the temperature in the gym. Well, the reason why that, that's such okay, and, and let me talk about like because of course you're right. There'll be some people that take bar and they're like they swear by it, right? It's like oh, I've I got in the best shape. There, that's my re that's my my arguing that is so amazing. It's like if you were doing nothing 
and you decide you're going to go join your bar class and you're going to eat better, like, of course, yeah. you'll lose body fat doing that. And of course, maybe you'll even build a little bit of muscle because you weren't doing it. And there's, there's, there is a component of isometrics in there. Yes. There's, you're definitely doing 20, 30 reps. So that will stimulate muscle growth. And if you pair that with eating well, you could get some results with it, but that's, it's going to, you're going to adapt to that way of training relatively quick. And then you're going to stall really hard. And yeah. if you don't find a way- but you'll sweat every time yeah you'll sweat every time and so then in your head you'll which is why you see in the orange series the f45s the you know the, the curves type of model the all these circuit based type of classes mm -hmm. people get results at the beginning of it because it is it is novel it's a novel stimulus to them and it's they definitely sweat. better than nothing right Don't yeah applied properly well, th this was like the confusing uh part of being in the gym and then seeing uh the group x instructors like not being in the greatest shape, but you see them sweating their ass off and doing multiple classes all day long, but yet their body composition wasn't Dude, really changing. What, result. what about sweating? What about the cardio addicts in the gyms that we would run? Yeah. I mean, you you would see people yeah, same difference. Yeah, when you manage gyms for a long time, you see your regulars, right? And there and look, anybody who's worked in a gym for longer than a year can attest to this. There's a group of people, typically morning, um, in my experience, that come in and they get on cardio and they go nuts. They go crazy on the Stairmaster, crazy on the elliptical, and they sweat buckets and their bodies never change. Mm -hmm. Never change. Now, now their, their fitness is, is better than somebody who doesn't do that. They're definitely getting some health uh, benefits. So I don't want to say they're doing nothing, but my point is the sweat in the workout mm -hmm. isn't producing results for them. In fact, these people would often come to me frustrated and say things like, you, you see me coming in at 6 a.m. every day and I'm sweating my ass off. Why can't I lose this 25 pounds? And I say, well, okay, well, we got to try some strength training. Let's look at your calories. Oh, strength training? Is it, that's like, doesn't really, I don't really sweat when I do that. I would have people tell me that all the time. No. I, you know, I, I like to sweat when I work out. Like, okay, why? <laughs> Just because you like to sweat or because you like the results? Some of the most effective workouts that I've ever, I've ever had clients do were the ones that didn't make them sweat. Well, especially if yeah. you're the type of person who is attracted to that. Yes. If you're the someone who likes that and you gravitate to that type of training where, it, you know, trying to always break a sweat, nine times out of 10, the best workout for you is that that five by five, three minute rest yes. period type of training and watch how much your body responds to that because it's so polar opposite of what you gravitate yes. towards. Now, the next one is funny because uh, this is everybody and that's where people judge a workout by just how hard it is. Okay. And you'll talk to people like this, like, hey, uh, you know, how's that workout you're doing? Oh my God, it's so awesome. Well, what do you mean? It kicks my ass. <laughs> you you do realize that you need you need zero workout programming expertise or experience to design a kick a workout that kicks your ass. Yeah. I could literally take anybody and have them do jumping jacks for an hour and it'll kick their ass. I could tell them to climb stairs and and then do push ups. It'll kick their this ass. This is where could, personal trainers get the stigma. Yes, it, it really is like it. People don't realize there's a science to this whole yeah. process. It's just because of. Um, it, they come in with this expectation and, and a lot of trainers will meet that expectation uh, to, to try and provide them with something that is insanely hard uh, and challenging because the thought is that that's going to be the most effective. Yeah. The, the problem is, is that there is an element of value that comes from challenge. So there's a little bit of truth here, right? Yeah. There's some truth. Like challenge is what gets your body to adapt you learn from it, you grow from it. So I get that. But what I'm talking about is when this is this is how you judge your entire workout because it's super hard and it feels good to overcome something that's hard. Mm -hmm. And that's where people get this like I survived <coughs> this hard workout. Oh, it must be super. And there's there's and you get you get that's this just one workout. And you well, get this the, great feeling from the, it. The right? truth is there's it, there's a spectrum and most people are on on both ends and the sweet spot is in the middle, right? So you have client A who we've trained this person who uh you know consistent she's never missed a workout she's been training 5 days a week for 30 years or like that and she does the you know bicep curls shoulder but she has this routine and it's like she has the same weight for everything yeah, that she, she does. Yeah, she could be reading a book the whole time. Right, right. She does the same exact weights. She's been doing the same weights and the same type of a routine forever. Mm -hmm. So it's good. She's exercising. She's yeah. moving. Okay, so I'm not, not... But that's this side of the spectrum. That person is not challenging themselves. They're not... They're never overreaching. They're never stretching their yeah. capacity. They're never, like, going beyond what they normally do. And then you have the other extreme, which is, like, the, the people that are love and addicted to, like, CrossFit things that are, like, so crazy hard they want to throw up afterwards. It's, like, really the sweet spot is somewhere in the middle of this 
this of like, okay, I don't want to catch myself never challenging myself and kind of doing what's easy and what I can always do because then I'm not forcing my body to adapt and change. Mm -hmm. But I don't want to try and force myself to adapt and change so bad that I'm puking and hobbling the next day. It's kind of somewhere in the you middle You know what's of funny about that? I'm going to say something controversial. If we took those two people and we looked at long-term success. <laughs> the, le- the, one, the, the, the person who went the to the gym. The five-pound dumbbell lady the, wins. The person who went to the gym and took <laughs> yeah. it easy. is Why? Because they're consistent. They didn't hurt themselves. They didn't fry themselves. The super intense, like, I got to beat myself up people. They can't stay they consistent. They drop off. Yeah. They just can't. Their and bodies they, can't last. They, they have the harder pendulum swings. Oh, yeah. The, the lady I'm talking like, I'm thinking of, like, several client, client slash oh, I know. friends I, of I, my I, nine same here. that I had that, you know, they're in their 60s now and stuff like that. And they, you know, they they come from the watching Jane Fonda videos, like, for ye- decades. Pretty good shape, though. I mean, she looks great still right yeah. now. She came to me to get to the next level. And one of the first things I looked at, I was like, you're doing the same thing the yeah. same way forever. Like, that's kept you here, which I think you look great for your age. But if you want the next level, these are the things we're going to do. How funny. Versus the person you're talking about who, like, is attracted to that stuff. That person goes on crazy yo-yo swings. Hardcore. They've been been in better shape maybe than she has in in small periods of their life for a month. And then they fall off the wagon. And then they go the opposite extreme. Or they burn themselves out and hurt themselves. Yeah. It's so funny. The person you were talking about at first, uh, you can always tell because you'll say, well, what do your workouts look like now? They'll say, well... I start out by doing lunges with 10 pound dumbbells and then I do overhead presses with five. Like they have the weights already. Yeah. Yeah. Like not just the exercise, but I tell the exact weights they're using. Like, yeah. wait a minute, how long have you been using these weights, dude? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's the same, you know, it's the same thing over and over again. Yeah. It's, um, that, that seeking out that I got to beat myself up every time I work out is only going to lead to failure. It, and I don't care who you are. It's 100% going to lead to failure, which takes us to the next one. And this is a, another terrible way to judge a workout. And that is, how crappy you feel afterwards. Literally, <laughs> literally, uh, people tell me it's a great workout. What do you mean by that? Man, I couldn't, I, walk. I couldn't move for two days afterwards. Or, oh man, when I got home, I just laid on the couch for the rest of the I day. threw what? up everything I ate that yeah. day. It was awesome. What a great workout. And I'm like, what? That is, that's actually the opposite. That means, that means you went too, way too hard and your body's not going to adapt from that, it, let alone heal. It's going to have a tough time just healing from that. So yeah. collectively, we all you know, kind of the hammer on the the CrossFit programming and the CrossFit mentality. But what a lot of people don't understand or realize is that the three of us long before mind pump had our own personal journeys mm-hmm. and we all had very much so CrossFit has been around for a long time now. Yeah. Uh, we didn't know each other when we had our own individual experiences. And so this was my experience with CrossFit. Early for, days CrossFit. Yeah. Before sure. it was popular and stuff like that. I had some of the original friends that were doing it in parking lots. Yeah. It, people it know started it. up here in Santa Cruz. It ra- yeah. It originated yeah. here in the Bay area. Yeah. So it's from here. So before it became mainstream, it made its way over into my circle of friends mm-hmm. and my trainer group, and we were doing it. I was doing like yeah. I would take from the workouts, and then we would apply mm-hmm. it in the gym. And I remember I have vivid memories of doing it with some of my trainers and stuff, and then laying in my office, just my, my I could feel my head pulsing, and I'm like, mm-hmm. and I didn't want to do anything the rest of the day. I'm like, I can't do this and be like a workout time. This is I, this can't be a good thing to feel this way. <laughs> yeah. And I, re- I remember trying to push through it and thinking, oh, I'm going to do it, and like having that competitive, athletic mindset to it. I'm like, right. this is not good, and that's what made me never train a client that way or like tell most people that way. It's like zero to a hundred. Yeah, and, way too uh, crazy. Yeah, I had the same experience, and it was almost like you got. A little bit of tunnel vision because of the cardiovascular demand on top yeah. of, you know, the an- anaerobic Compost, yeah. demand, like both in combination. Like they're just trying to pull the 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 most exhausting, hardest, most intense combinations as possible it was really the desired outcome of the structure of these workouts. Yeah, the, uh, the original unofficial mascot, a lot of people don't know this, the unofficial the original clown. mascot was a, was a clown throwing up. Yeah, Pukey the Clown, right? That was his name. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. so that alone will tell you, you know, kind of you know how that went. And I tell you what, you may be listening to this saying, oh, I know somebody that works yeah. out that way and they're in great shape. Okay, this is all individual. What may be, an, look, an effective workout for me. Yeah, I know people that run big companies that do cocaine every single day. No, well, no, that's not, that's <laughs> I, mean, not a, I mean, but that's a, that's a terrible argument, dude, yeah, just because yeah. we know somebody who's fit, who does something that's not healthy and well, good for well, you what doesn't I mean fucking by that mean is, it's the right way ask, or success. Are they, what are they intervening to uh, maintain that? Like, have they ever had any injuries? Uh, like, uh, I mean, let's let's do percentages of that. Well, be here, interesting to here's see. the point that I'm trying to make. If, <laughs> yeah. if, if you took someone off the street who doesn't work out and you had them follow my workout, they would... 
be it would be super hard. They get super sore and they would feel like dog shit for two days afterwards. So for me, it's an effective workout. For them, it was too much. So that's what I mean by that. There's an individual component here. So you may know someone that does these crazy workouts and say, well, it works for this person. Right. It's not working for you, especially if you feel any of the things that we talked about. That's telling you it's an inappropriate intensity, volume, um, and frequency of training for you. It's just not effective. In fact, it's the opposite of effective. It will take you backwards. I mean, you bring that up, and I just think it's a good point or a good time to bring that point up too. Is it is a terrible idea for us ever to compare anybody else's results to what we're what we're trying to do. Yes, for so many reasons, aside from the the massive genetic variance to where they're currently at in their routine to what their eating habits look like. Like it's so different, and to to not know everything about that person. Like a lot of people are in really good sh shape in spite of how truly healthy they really are. Mm. A lot of people are tortured inside, and it's their insecurities that drive them to this. They're running away from something, and instead of medicating with drugs, they found health and fitness to be their medication, and they've gone all in on good it. Point. And so yeah. they have this physique that you go, "Oh my God, it's so amazing!" They look so healthy, but inside they're so unhealthy. So to even use somebody else as an example for what you think you want for yourself is a terrible idea. I don't care how well you think you know I them. tell you what, yep. you if you take a bunch of, you take a, a 50 shredded people, okay? I bet you the mental health, mm. uh, the mental health issues will probably be twice as worse as the average population. Uh, and I mean shredded, right? So these are like what you said, like I, some of the worst eating disorders I've ever seen were people in the fitness industry. Um, so that's a great point that you absolutely make. So you don't know what that person is doing. They may look a particular way, but you may not, you don't probably don't want to trade for what's going on inside to look the way that's that right. they, want, that that's they right. look. Now, okay, so we talked about terrible ways to judge your workout. We should give people good ways. Like, okay, fine. How do I judge a workout to know that it's good? Here's the first one. You get stronger. Okay, it sounds obvious, but um, you can do things, some stuff wrong and get stronger, but usually it means you're doing a lot of things right, especially if it's consistent, especially if you're you're past that first couple months of, of working out where everybody gets stronger. If you're still seeing, seeing strength gains, you're probably doing a lot of things right. And it's objective. There's more weight on the bar. There's more weight on the bar. I know I'm stronger. That's a great way to judge a workout. I like this one because I didn't focus on this for a really long time because I didn't care about it. I didn't care about strength. And so I was so focused on aesthetics, the way I looked mm. in the mirror, that that was what was driving or me dictating like whether I was having a good workout or not. But this is uh, way, way less subjective. I think this is a much better way to judge if my programming is solid. Yes. Mm -hmm. Forget about my diet, my consistency, and all the other things that come into it. It's like, am I following a good routine? You know, and if I can say I'm getting stronger in my routine, the answer is probably yes, I'm following a solid. Well, this routine. also implies that you have to really be paying attention uh, in terms of like uh, if you are progressively overloading, if you have a plan in place uh, to to achieve, uh, you know, uh, more load within like certain lifts or like uh, otherwise, like for the majority of people I've encountered, uh, most people just want to get through the workout. Yeah, and, and and really, it's just like the objective is to just I I made it through, uh, and and a lot of that the intent of going into it is completely different than say somebody that is is thinking and focusing ahead of time on very specific lifts and what they've done before, which means they're they're keeping track yeah. and now they can see progress. Yeah, strength gains, consistent strength gains in my clients always preceded. Muscle gain, metabolism boosting, and then with good diet, fat loss. So when I saw my clients get stronger consistently, you know, relatively consistent, it's not always, you know, up, but they would go up and pause, up and pop type, type of deal. When I would see that happen, I'm like, oh, cool. We're moving in the right direction. All those aesthetic goals that they want, they're, they're going to start popping up. The next one is improved stamina. So your, your fitness improved uh, uh, basically, right? So you can go longer. You can handle more volume. You feel great. Uh, from doing so. Again, it's more of an objective measure, right? And it's funny that I'm saying this and uh, that I have to communicate this because obviously that's what you should be looking for with the workout. Am I better at it? Mm -hmm. Am I stronger? Do I have more stamina? Like those are, those are pretty damn good objective measures of a successful workout. Um, the next one, I like this one because people tend to look at weight on the scale. I look at body composition. Okay. If your weight goes down or up, doesn't matter to me if your body fat percentage went up and your muscle went down. I'm looking at muscle going up, fat going down. 
if you're building muscle and you're burning body fat, you're probably doing most things right. right. And you could usually tell this by how your clothes fit, right? A lot of times the clients will be like, wow, my waist is, you know, the, my waistline is definitely different, but I feel like heavier or like I feel like I've put on, you know, a little bit of weight. But if you look at um, objectively on how like uh, your body's composition has changed, like that's really what you need to be. So I'm, I'm a big fan of the the front side and back shot photo with your iPhone or whatever in the mirror at the same time every single week. And even though I'm having you take it every Friday, first thing when you wake up, um, I'm we're not making any dramatic changes week to week. We're looking at it like every three to four weeks. Every three to four weeks, I'm comparing those visuals from the you know week one versus you know week three or four. If I'm going to make any mm. any changes to it, right? Because a lot can fluctuate in just a in a few days, and definitely even even in a week's time, right? Like if someone took a picture, and and we've talked about the water and how that can change the way somebody looks the day before. It could could throw off what I think I see in the mirror in one week's time. But over the course of like three, four weeks, if they've been consistent with the dieting and following what we're doing, I should see a, a physical change from week one and week four mm -hmm. to give me an idea as a coach like, oh, I need to increase this or, oh, we need to cut back on this or more of this, less of that. And I just like, I like that. I like teaching a client to, to look at that. And it's not, we're not doing that to judge or compare or anything like that to other people. It's literally just another other tool that we're using to measure and I like it better than the scale. Yeah. And you got to make sure you do it same time, same, you know, the same lighting, everything the same. So it could be as objective as possible. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm not, when I'm doing these, like these are for my personal use and or which is clients. I'm not using it for social media to share. It's not for any, it's literally for me just to have another objective way to measure. Am I, am I doing the right things? Yes. This next, the next one is you just have more energy. And I mean good, clean energy, not stimulant energy or wired and nervous energy, but you just have more energy. You notice you have more energy for things around the house, more energy to do things with your kids, more energy for work. You just have more energy. Crappy workouts and bad programming will give you less energy. Mm -hmm. Like all the stuff we said earlier, all the bad stuff, you'll find that your energy will start to wane over time and you start to feel more and more fatigued. With something like this, you just have better energy over time. And it means that your your workouts are probably doing a good thing. This is my favorite thing to teach clients because I think it has um, – it's one of those things that I think we could – one, it's it's easy for people to be able to measure and, and compare like because their, their, their days are pretty consistent. They go to work at the same time. They do the same kind of thing. They eat lunch at the same time. They come home at the same time. Like So we're very consistent creatures when it comes to like our you know week. And it's pretty easy to take a client who you, – you get them and they go – yeah, you know, I always kind of have this energy dip, dip around this time where I come home from work and all I want to do is relax and watch TV or whatever. And then you start training them correctly and they start, those things start to change, yes. right? Like, I, and I noticed That's this- the first thing I said. I here. noticed this in myself right away. Like it, it's one of the things that has kept me consistent as I've gotten older is, you know, more so doing it for how I look or how I feel or how strong I am. I love this aspect. I'm just a better person at home. Like I'm just, I'm a better husband. I'm a better father. I'm better- I'm a better supporter, like around the house. Like I just, I, after I work out, I, I don't have the same feeling. Like if I, if we are in here all day long, I miss a workout and I don't feel good. I drive home. Like I just tend to lay around. I don't want to do much. Mm -hmm. Like, can I force myself? Yeah. There's times where I tell, okay, Adam, you got to get up and go do something, but I don't have to have that internal conversation when I'm training, when I'm training, I naturally have that energy. I come in the door and I right away want to do the dishes on the counter or help out with Max or do something like that. I think this is one of the best things to help clients connect. Well, I think also too, one of the byproducts of expending a certain amount of energy and to the point where you're not over fatigued, like it really then impacts the way that you sleep, which then helps with you to recharge. Yeah. And then the next day provides you with more energy. And it's this sort of cycle so that you're, you're, you're promoting a, a, a better way for your body to, um, you know, recharge and, and recover. Yeah. Which brings us to the next one, which is a little different than energy. And that is that you have improved vitality. So what does that mean? A better zest for life, uh, more motivated, a better attitude. Things don't seem as bad. Um, and good things seem even better. You start to notice you have more gratitude. You just generally have better vitality. This is how this is the things that I would point out to clients because physical results take a little longer to happen, but these results tend to happen relatively quick. And so I'll ask them questions like, well, okay, how's your energy? 
How's your sleep? Have you noticed any changes in your mood? I'm like, well, yeah, you know, I, I noticed I'm just more patient with the kids or, you know, I come home and I had great conversation with my wife the other day. And, you know, before that we were kind of at odds and now, and so we're, we're talking about their vitality and that's a great way to judge your workout and your diet. If you have improved vitality, you're doing, so, you're doing a lot of stuff right. If your vitality starts to decrease, then we got to start to look at the workouts and the nutrition because something might be off. Yeah, I, I love talking about all these things that that you start to make the connection that you're making a good workout because these are all the same things that I think that keep you working out. Too. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I, I love the like good okay, ones. Right? Yeah. All the things that the, all the positive things that represent, you know, Hey, you've had a good workout are also all the positive things that are what keep you going for the rest of your life. If you can learn to look at these things, that's why it's so important. Like the other things that are bad ways to judge, like there's th those things don't bleed into your, your lifelong, like crushing yourself after a workout. <laughs> Does it make your life necessarily better later on? It's these things right here that we're trying to connect the dots with clients because if they can yes. make that make that connection, it's much more motivating for them to continue on long term. Yeah, you only feel as good as is what you know in terms of like how good I've ever felt. Like so some people have never felt like that optimal health and in that sort of that combination of everything working at the same time. And so once you get to that place, it's like, wow, it's it's a bit addictive in a sense where where, you know, you can keep repeating these patterns and it's going to promote uh, that type of a feeling. Totally. Look, if you like our information, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out our guides. We have guides that can help you with almost any health or fitness goal. You can also find all of us on social media. So Justin is on Instagram at mindpumpjustin. Adam is on Instagram at mindpumpadam. And you can find me on Twitter at mindpumpsal. How do I incorporate cardio and not lose muscle? I've seen people do this before where they'll start to lose the sharpness of their muscles or they'll start to lose the sculpt a little bit. And that's disheartening. But if you do it right, then you minimize that muscle loss or that metabolism slowdown. In fact, if you do it right, you can actually speed up your metabolism at the same time that you build stamina and endurance. You just have to be able to kind of program it properly. And the way to program it improperly is just to go do as much cardio as you can for as long as you can. Right.